Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This year on RV Miles, we're doing something really special. We're moving out of our big 43 foot fifth wheel for a period of seven or eight months to make a big adventure all the way from Southern Baja, California, up to Alaska, the entire Pacific coast of North America. And in order to do so, we could do it in our fifth wheel. We love our fifth wheel. It's been a great home for us. But in order to get into some more unavailable camping spots, some smaller camping spots and some of those California state parks that are very, very small, we decided we might downsize. So we have partnered with our friends at Forest River. We're brand ambassadors for Forest River to move into an Ibex 20 BHS. This is a 25 foot travel trailer that it's going to be the home for our family of five for the next seven or eight months. Some of the things that got us excited about the Ibex were first of all, huge cargo carrying capacity, which is something that you often don't find in small travel trailers, but this one's got the room to put your stuff into it. It's got off-road suspension, which I'll show you in a minute. We love the way they construct them. The factory keeps all the parts inside. They don't store everything outdoors like a lot of them do. Uh, there's roof rack storage space. It comes with the stuff we need and it's not loaded with the stuff we don't. There's some things that we just don't want and usually that's sort of electronic stuff that can go bad. And this is a very, very manual travel trailer, which I'll show you all about. But let's start here in the front. We've got a power tongue jack, which is one of the few power things that you actually do want. It is not fun to crank these, though you can manually crank them. It does have a light on it as well. Two 20 pound propane tanks. A lot of the smaller ones come with one. This comes with two. There's a battery tray right behind there. We're actually gonna be replacing the battery with our lithium batteries from our fifth wheel, moving them over here and putting them on the inside. So that's gonna open up for us to put some sort of storage box or something. We've got a battery disconnect up here. So you can just turn your batteries off right on the outside, which is nice to do when you arrive at a campsite, you can turn them on. And then there's a little, that yellow thing there is a sensor for the tire pressure monitoring system. It comes with tire pressure monitoring included it's the manufacturer installed inside the tire kind not the screw on cap kind so it's really really good and it's got the monitor for in your truck and and everything coming around the side we've got our pass-through storage right here all the cargo bay doors have magnetic stops on them which is really convenient when you have a broken finger and a giant cast it's a decent sized pass-through storage. It's not tall, but obviously it goes all the way across. So there's a decent amount of, of space in there and it's not eaten up by anything. Underneath, we do have the manual scissor jacks, four of them around the outside. And it comes with obviously the little crank that you can crank them down with, or you can use a power drill to put them down with. Again, something we actually prefer. This is so far in our time being in this, we are not living in it yet, but just walking in it and having the kids over here, of the different stabilizer systems that we've had on RVs, the old school four point crank them down manually jacks are by far the sturdiest. Up top, we've got a big Solera awning. And one of the cool things about this awning that I haven't experienced before is that it has this adjustable pitch that you just grab and pull it down and it changes the pitch and it holds still with some friction. I think that's pretty cool. We'll see how that works out. We do have a friction hinge door. So if you've ever had the door blow closed on you, that doesn't happen with these friction hinge doors. We have one over on the Sabre as well. And we like it for the most part. They don't tend to shut as easily as the other ones, which is good and bad, but it is nice that they kind of just hold themselves in place and the wind doesn't pick up and slam them shut. You get the Moride solid state steps. So these flip up and they actually touch the ground. So it's real sturdy to go on the kids don't feel like they're going up and down a diving board, which is another one of those things that makes the trailer rock a lot. You've got a handle that opens and closes for, for travel. There is lighting above. There's a strip light that goes all the way across the inside of the awning. And then you have an individual porch light. And what's really cool about this porch light is it can be yellow or white. So if you really need a lot of light, you can have it on white, but that white attracts bugs as we all know. So if you have it on yellow, you can still get a little bit of light outside. It's not blinding your neighbors and it's keeping the bugs from being attracted to the door space, which is always a problem. We do have an outlet out here so you can plug in any 110 volt stuff. Down here is one of the best parts of this RV is you get Wrangler Duratrac tire stock. 
and they are on an independent suspension system. They call it beast mode at Ibex, but it is Kurt's independent suspension system. So each wheel has its own coil spring and shock, which means you can really have some fun off road. You can take this down some bumpy forest service roads, some washboard roads, and you don't have to worry as much about stuff bouncing around inside. And we've already been able to test that out a bit. Jack and I, my oldest, we took this out to do some drone shots down a forest service road that was really the most awful road we will ever take this down and everything was fine inside. And we also traveled 2000 miles pulling this thing behind a Honda Ridgeline, which I don't recommend to anybody, but it was stable, rock solid, all the way across Route 66, the entire way here to Palm Springs, California from Elkhart, Indiana, where we picked it up. And I think a lot of that has to do with this independent suspension. So I'm really excited to see where this type of technology moves forward with some of these smaller trailers. I don't think they can put it on the bigger stuff yet, but it's nice for the smaller stuff. Comes with a Suburban Elite Series griddle, We've been using this one up at the Sabre quite a bit. To me, it's pretty comparable to our Blackstones. I don't really find any issues with it. It's a little small, um, which is okay with me. It doesn't have a regulator on it, so it plugs right into your RV's propane system. So if you've ever bought a Blackstone and you wanted to plug it into your Quick Connect system, you have to buy a special hose in order to be able to do that. But then the downside of that is that you can only use this with an RV. You can't take it somewhere else and use it because it doesn't have a regulator. It's using the main regulator from your RV system. Um, and then you get this little tabletop. Both of these connect into this rail that's on the side of the RV, so it just pops off and you can put this into your pass-through storage. And then other, underneath here, we have a, a spray port with a really long hose on it. That hose can stretch long enough to spray the front of the RV off if you want it to. And it comes with a spray nozzle and the water's kind of hooked up, but not really. Around the back, here's that spare tire we talked about, full-size Wrangler Duratrac spare tire. You do get a 300 pound load capacity ladder to the roof. This is the scene of the crime where I broke my finger coming down the ladder and I just sort of hopped off the end here and uh, my my ring my wedding ring caught on one of these rungs and snapped my finger and the wedding ring flew in the air and Abby found it later on over here is the black tank flush so there is a integrated black tank flush it is on the back there is pre-wire for a backup camera up top and then around this side you get your cable satellite connection right here and you get a power connection right here all the way at the back, and then another storage bin here. So this storage is actually underneath the bottom bunk, and it's it's quite a decent size. It takes about half the bunk, and then the rest is the water heater. It's a electric and propane water heater. This is the kind that you do have to switch the, the electric switch on the outside, inside this bay. There's not a switch inside, so you pull this open, turn the electric switch on. Since it doesn't run through the built-in inverter, you can actually just leave that on all the time. So the water heater only turns on electric when you're plugged in. Um, if you have a whole house inverter, you wanna be able to turn that on and off so that you're not running it off of the inverter. Single slide, which is really nice. We've got four slides now, and that's one of the things that is gonna make us a little bit more nimble, and we'll show you more about that on the inside. Let's come around to the front. Here we've got the other side of our pass-through storage, and we've got the fresh water gravity fill, which I prefer to the kind you connect a hose to because you can pour water into it. Uh, with the kind you connect a hose to, you can't. And then you've got a city water connection right there in your fresh water drain down below. And that's most of the outside, but there are a couple things that are up top that are really interesting. There's a 200 watt solar panel up there from GoPower. So it's a really nice solar panel, not some sort of piece of cheap junk. And then they also have a set of rails up there in the back that are compatible with the Rhino Rack system. So you can put some load bars up there that can hold your kayaks or they can hold a big storage bin or whatever you want to hold up on the roof. You can do that. So that's the outside. Let's move on inside and check out the living space. Welcome to the inside of our 2023 Ibex BHS. As you can see, it is a single living space. There are no bedrooms in here. We've got bunks in the back. We've got a kitchen over here. We've got a dinette over here. And let's start up here with the bedroom, which is not a room at all, but we're gonna rectify that with the curtain. What we like about this is that we have a space where we can all sort of be a little bit closer together, adventure together a little bit more. What we found living in the big fifth wheel, which we again love, 
is that we all have our own little spaces, we all go to them, and we stay away from each other. And we want to get back to sort of how we began camping uh, when we first hit the road in our bus conversion, where we were a little bit more tight-knit, where we spent a little bit more time together, we played more games, and we did more stuff outside. So the outside is definitely going to be our living room here. So up here in the main bedroom space, we do have cabinets surrounding the bed with drawers on the bottom of each of them. On the sides are a wardrobe cabinet, so they've got a closet rod in them. Up above, you do have pneumatic struts that hold the doors up. If you've ever had overhead doors that don't have those, you know how, how great that is. And around the bed, we've got USB ports on either side. We've got reading lamps above, and we've got that fantastic panoramic window over the bed. It is a full 60 by 80 queen size bed, so you can put a regular queen mattress in here. Uh, we are gonna be changing out the mattress. It does come with you know the very cheap RV mattress. Underneath, there is storage. So you've got your 2000 watt inverter under there that has actually the big proper sized cables, which is really nice. Every outlet in the RV is on that inverter. So you can run all the outlets off of your batteries. And then you've got some storage area under there as well. If I can ding Ibex on one thing is that there's only one strut under this. It would be nice if there was another one over here. I'm gonna have to replace those anyway to be stronger, to be able to hold our heavier mattress that we're gonna put on here. There is a vent above. This is not a fan. It is just a vent that opens. You could probably change it out and put a fan in there if you wanted to. There are outlets down towards the bottom on either side, so you can plug your CPAP machine in or whatever you want to charge your laptops. Over here, we've got a DC television that is on a swing mount so it can come out from the wall. Uh, and it again, it is DC 12 volt. So it's not using any extra power by converting from the inverter. You can run it without the inverter on at all, and it still works. The, the control panel for the inverter, by the way, is down there, hidden underneath the, the side of the bed. That's the main bed space. Let's move around to the slides. So it is a single slide. This is on the Schwintec system. With it closed, we can still access everything in here, which was one of the things that we really were excited about about this RV. In, in the Sabre, we can't access anything at all. With the slide closed here, we can sleep in here, we can cook in here, we can use the bathroom. So whenever we stop on a travel day, when we're driving up through Alaska and we need to access the bathroom, it is there for us without leveling and putting the slide out. This is gonna be our middle son's bedroom area. We're not a big fan of converting dinettes to beds every night, um, so we're not gonna really do that very much. This is gonna be mainly his space and we're really only gonna convert it back to a dinette on sort of rainy days or, or cold days when we're all gonna be stuck inside a little bit. Like I said, we're gonna put a curtain up here in front of our bed. We're also gonna put a curtain over here for his bed so he has some privacy. You get storage under the the two sides of the dinette with, with cabinet doors, which is always nice. Sometimes you have to access the storage by lifting up a piece of plywood underneath the seat. We had that in our, uh, our last RV and that was kind of a pain in the butt. So it's nice to be able to, to get into that. Back here, we've got the bunk space. It is a built-in ladder that's real strong. You don't have to be like pulling a ladder out from behind a couch and attaching it and it's in the way for the slide to come in and you gotta put it away. It's nice to have the, that ladder permanently there for the kids to go up and down. And the bunk spaces are fairly tall, which is nice. The top one has a, a full curtain that comes around this track up here and the bottom one has one as well that comes around here and uh, you can get to that underneath storage from the inside here. That's also where you winterize your hot water. Again, you just lift up a piece of plywood that's underneath that bunk right there. On the front of the bunks, we've got the HVAC system. It is a Furion air conditioner that has a dry mode. So it will dry the air without cooling it, which is nice. So you can run that. Say if you're in the winter and you're getting a lot of condensation and you've got the heat on, you can also dry the air. And we've got our propane and gas detector down there at the bottom along with an outlet down there. The outlets are one, two by the bed, one in the kitchen, one down there, and one in the bathroom. And again, they're all on the inverter. Let's take a look at the kitchen since we're here. Starting on this end, we've got a 
pretty large pantry and they go full depth. There is a, a lock box in the, in the back of this second one here that works on the keys. So the keys for this RV are, it's all one key that runs the front door in your storage bays and this lock box. So you don't have to worry about the fact that everyone else in the, in the campground has a key that opens your storage bays. If you didn't know that, most of the storage bay keys are the same. That's not true on the Ibex. I'm not totally crazy about where they put this. I might find a different spot for it so we can have a little bit more pantry space there. I might put it like in the corner of the under bed storage or something like that. It's not, it's not safe. It's not big heavy duty steel, but it's a, a place to put some important papers, put your passports there or something like that if you wanted to. Down below is one of the coolest features of this RV. We've got a built in vac. So you can lift this up and sweep stuff right into it. It is, it is a, a floor vacuum so you can you can sweep your entire floor bring it over here and sweep it into the vac and then on the front of the vacuum system itself there is a hole there where you can attach an actual hose attachment if you want and run that all around your rv and it comes with one that's really long and you can get into every nook and cranny and crevice right there and you just switch it on it's really nice to have that built in because there's some things that rv manufacturers don't think about like people want to carry a vacuum with them where do you put that vacuum? Where do you put the garbage? Where do you put the laundry? Some of those things I wish more RV manufacturers thought about. The fridge is a DC powered refrigerator. Again, so it runs not on your inverter. It doesn't run on propane, but it runs off your batteries. And these are, these are a mixed bag. Um, they're great for saving power when they're smaller. The bigger ones do use a decent amount of power. We have a really big one in the saver and it uses a decent amount of power. This one being smaller, we're hoping uses less power, but they do use less power than running them off of 110 volt. Uh, but it's a decent amount of space. Ibex says this is the largest in this class. It's more room than we had in our Pioneer, which had a similar size fridge, but it was gas. And the gas absorption fridges are never as deep because there's just a lot more going on in the back side of them. This Norcold fridge has some interesting features like a night mode that I haven't looked into yet, but I'm excited to learn a little bit more about. In the kitchen space, we have no counter space, as you can see. You do have, obviously, the stovetop that can fold down and you can use that as some counter space, but there's very little counter space. If it were me, I probably would have put two burners in here instead of three, uh, but people like the three burners. I don't know why, because I don't know who uses three pans at the same time, but it's there. Um, there is no oven. It is a microwave convection oven. So you don't have a traditional gas oven. You have a microwave that can also run in con on convection mode, which is basically like having a toaster oven microwave combo. And that's good enough for us. The sink is, it does have a, a sink cover. The sink is fairly deep, big round bowl sink. Um, so there's a decent amount of space there, but again, it's a single sink. So you don't have a lot of room to put dishes. We're gonna have to wash dishes after every single meal. We've got a big cabinet underneath here. The top goes all the way back and is, is very deep. The bottom is much shallower because there's, uh, there's ductwork that runs behind that for the furnace. Uh, that, that big vent down there is the intake for the furnace. Up above, we also have some cabinet storage as well, and, uh, and then a spray nozzle for the sink, and that's pretty much the kitchen. There's not much else to it. So in the bathroom, we do have a decent sized shower. Uh, even though it's a big step up into the shower, I still have decent amount of head height. I'm six foot two, and that's one thing I've noticed about this RV overall, it is a decent head height for the length that it is. I don't know that I mentioned the length, but it's 25 foot long. And uh, a lot of these smaller RVs don't have this kind of head height. So I can step in here and I've still got the, the skylight over my head and there's plenty of room above me being six foot two. The bathroom size is decent in general and you get pretty much a mirror of the kitchen pantry for like a, a linen closet. We're gonna end up putting, I think, some of the kids' clothes in these cabinets, they're they're pretty deep. They go all the way back. You get a Thetford toilet that does have a, a soft close lid, which is kind of cool. Um, decent amount of storage over here for your toilet paper and stuff. And then a cabinet under the sink that is mostly taken up by plumbing, 
but it's there to use. Sometimes they block those off and you can't even get to that space. Up here we've got a medicine cabinet as well. And this little tag here is reminding me about something I didn't mention in the shower. So the shower has this water miser system. So what you do is you turn your hot water on and you know how when you run your hot water waiting for your shower to heat up, you lose a lot of water, you waste a lot of water down the drain. Well, this blue part turns white when the water has heated up and no water is coming out. So you turn your water on that when you wait for that blue part to turn white and you know your water's hot and then you just flick this little switch and the, the water comes out. So you've been able to save all that water, recycle it back into your freshwater tank without wasting it down your drain. All of your sort of controls are in the bathroom. So you got your panel with your gray, black, fresh and battery levels and your water heater uh, power switch for the propane and your water pump. And then you've got heated holding tanks on here. So this is the, the switches for your DC powered heated holding tanks for when it's below freezing, one on the fresh black and gray tank. The water tank sizes are 30 gallons for the black, 40 for the fresh water and 40 for the gray water. Then you also have the solar controller in here as well for that 200 watt solar panel. It is a 30 amp, so you can't add more panels on your roof, daisy chain them in with the other one up there and this controller will be able to handle a, a bit more capacity up there. If you're putting a big system on, you might have to upgrade this, but it's not likely that you're gonna be doing that because there's not a lot of room up there to do that. This is a full max air vent fan, good name brand vent fan that is a full size. A lot of these vent fans are just a teeny tiny little fan inside that big 14 inch bay, but this is the full size one and we do love these because they move a heck of a lot of air. My only wish is that the one up front was one of these as well. I don't have it with me, but this is one of my favorite things about this RV. I just think it's funny. Is they it reminded me on this sticker here. They have a, an image of the JBL Flip 5. It's a battery powered speaker that it comes with. So one of the things that cracks me up about RVs is that many of us insist on outdoor speakers. The RV manufacturers, they spend like six bucks on them. They're so dirt cheap and awful. And this little thing is louder and sounds better. So I thought it was really cool that Ibex included something like that. Instead of spending the time to cut holes in the outside of your RV, create spots where things can leak and put cheap speakers on the outside by wasting all that labor money and all that sort of stuff. So overall, like I said earlier, what we like about Ibex is they include the stuff that we need. They don't include the stuff that we don't. We don't have big controller panels. So there's no display that you have to tap through 16 things to open your slide. Up here, you've got awning extend, slide room in, awning, LED on, porch light, interior light, and and that's it. It's all switches, which is fantastic. I don't want app control anymore. I thought I did when I first got it. I don't want to control my RV with an app. When the wind picks up, you don't want to have to open up an app and wait for it to connect or go to a screen, a touchpad and find the screen to bring your awning in. Your awning could be gone by that point. It's nice to be able to come and just press a button and have it in. So those are some of the things we like about the Ibex. It's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. We're going to do a lot to the inside here to get it ready for our journey. We're going to be putting a lot of storage in here, uh, the curtains, all, all new mattresses, and it's going to be a, a difficult challenge to do with a broken finger in about three weeks to do it, but I think we can manage it. It's going to be an exciting adventure. We're going to be doing some lots of things we don't normally do on RV miles. We're going to be doing some travel vlogs so you can follow our journey and find us on the road and not just see the news videos and all that stuff on this channel. We'll have that as well, a lot of how to's, but we're also gonna show you our travels a little bit more. So I hope you will click the subscribe button if you haven't and follow the channel. And if you have been with us for a while and you wanna support us, click that join button and become a mile marker member. And we'd be happy to have you along on the journey. Thanks a lot everybody and we'll see you next time.